Psalm 118, 24 says this, This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Today, we rejoice. And we're so thankful that God has ordained and created this day for us. And we're excited to be here together as friends and family to experience and to share in this wonderful union between two lives and two families. David and Hannah love each other and they have come here to this place at this moment wanting to come together as husband and wife. And we are excited to be a part of that today. This is going to be an incredible time. A wonderful time, again, of two coming together as one. Uh, this is also a great time to remember how God works and how He has worked in their lives to bring them to this point. So on behalf of them and their families, we want to welcome you here. We're thankful that you're here. They are thankful for you and your support and for your continued support as they begin this journey together. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for you're a good God. And we thank you that we, we're here today to celebrate something great and wonderful. Father, you have created marriage, and in that we celebrate. We celebrate David and, and Hannah and their decision to come together as husband and wife. And Father, we're excited to see what you're going to do in their life. We ask for your blessings upon this ceremony today. And we pray that you receive all honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Well, David, Hannah, you have made this decision to enter into marriage, coming together as husband and wife, and this is a, an incredibly serious decision that you have made. And I want to just, before we start, kind of share with you this commitment that you're making today and the importance of it. Uh, this is a more than just a piece of paper that, that I will sign at the end of this ceremony. I will sign that license and we'll send it in. And in the eyes of the state, you'll be husband and wife. And that's exciting. But your marriage has to be more than just a piece of paper. It has to be more than just a document that we sign. Your commitment has to be greater than that. We like to call it a covenant. Uh, we believe the Bible talks about a covenant. And a covenant is a deep, strong agreement between two people that mm. can never be broken. And so today you make a covenant not only with yourselves, but also with God. Because we believe God created marriage. Matter of fact, in Genesis it talks about how God created marriage. That God really had the first ceremony and gave the first bride away with Adam and Eve. And this is what it says in Genesis chapter 2. And while the world was still fresh from his creative hand, God bent low and whispered, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. So while he slept, took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. For this reason, man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. You know, we didn't invent this, and sometimes we like to think that we did. But we didn't invent marriage. God did. God created this. And so it's a very important decision that you guys have made to come together as husband and wife. Understanding that this is a covenant and that this is a great uh, and serious decision that you're making, I do want to ask you a question, uh, really for you to answer, uh, saying that you understand and that you truly are making the decision knowing that uh, you're in this forever. And so, David, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you, David, take this woman to be your lawful and wedded wife and promise to live together after God's ordinance in the holy state of matrimony? Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness, and in health, and forsaking all others, stay with her so long as you both shall live? And do you, Hannah, take this man to be your lawful and wedded husband, and promise to live together after God's ordinance and the holy state of matrimony? Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honor and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, stay with him so long as you both shall live? Well, good. 
<laughs> and there was no hesitation, so that's really good. <laughs> I tell you guys, I've enjoyed just, uh, David, I've known you for a while, and, and I've enjoyed getting to know you over these last few months, and walking through counseling together, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. It's been a joy for me to, to hear your stories, and to hear what God's doing in your life, and how He brought you to together and and I love your personalities I love the way you guys smile I love the way you guys laugh together and have fun together and and I'm looking forward to seeing what God's going to do with that he's going to use your personalities uh, bringing them together to do great and wonderful things and so I want to just challenge you uh, just a little bit encourage you I guess uh, in your marriage that you would start off on the right foot and know that you're doing exactly what God has for you because in the middle of of what God wants for you, that's where you'll find the most joy and happiness and strength in your marriage. You know, I was thinking about this church, and this is a very special place for you, I know. And uh, churches are a very important part of our life. We come and we worship here, and, and it's great. Uh, but what I love about the building is all that we enjoy in a church and being able to worship and to sing in this building really wouldn't be possible without the foundation that is built on. Mm. One, it's the foundation of the Lord. And, uh, and also, we, we look at the physical foundation. But the foundation of the Lord really is where it's built upon. And I want to encourage you to build your foundation upon Jesus. Here's what the scripture uh, tells us that I think is so important for, uh, for you guys today and forever. It says this in, in, uh, in Psalms. It says that um, unless the Lord builds a house, its builder labors over it in vain. And what a great truth that is for you guys today. Unless the Lord builds the house, then the laborer really builds it in vain. And, and for a marriage to be successful, as I know you guys want it to be, and I see that, and we've talked about that, and we want it to be a great success and, and close and deep relationship, can I just share this with you? Let the Lord build it. Build it upon Him and His foundation. You know, you're going to walk away from here and you're going to have moments in your life where it's a mountaintop and sometimes it's maybe a valley. And, and you guys are going to walk this together. And I think that's going to be a great growing time for you. But also remember, you're walking these uh, valleys and mountains with the Lord. And that's what keeps you strong. And so I want to encourage you in that. Allow the Lord to be that foundation and build your marriage upon Him. And he's going to do great and wonderful things. You know, Scripture talks about Jesus, obviously, and, and his love for you guys and, and his love in general. And, and really gives us a picture of, of this love and commitment that you guys are to have with one another. Uh, kind of the, the foundation in him. And I want to read that because I think it's such a beautiful uh, few verses in 1 Corinthians 13. I think we always need to share that when we're talking about relationship. But here's what it says. It says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast. It is not proud, it is not rude. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. You know, in Scripture, God is love. And so when you build your life upon Him as the foundation, this picture of relationship and love, that's what you're going to have in your life. So I want to encourage you in that. And I pray that every day you seek Him and seek that kind of love in your relationship. Not as the world gives, but as God gives to you guys. Okay? Well, understanding this relationship and how important it is, uh, we're going to move into uh, the, the, probably the, obviously the greatest part of our ceremony today. And this is where you guys are going to share your vows with one another. This verbal commitment that you're making to one another uh, of, of spending life together and how that's going to be uh, from this day forward. So, David, what I want you to do is, is to look into Hannah's eyes, <laughs> and, uh, and I want you to repeat these words after me, believing them and knowing them in your heart as you share these words with her. I, David, I, David. take you, Hannah, take you, Hannah. To, be my wedded wife. to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this, day forward, from this day forward, for better for worse, for, better, for, worse. for richer for poorer, for richer for poor, in sickness and in health, in 
in sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. All that I have. All that I have. To give to you. And I want you to repeat these words after me. I, Hannah. I, Hannah. Take you, David. Take you, David. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. All that I have. And all that I have. I give to you. I give to you. Now as a physical reminder of the vows that you just shared in the marriage relationship, we exchange wedding rings. <laughs> And so I know you guys have those. I'm going to ask for the rings. <laughs> you know, these wedding rings, uh, you know, people ask, why? Why wear wedding rings? Listen, it is a great reminder of the commitment that you guys have, are making today and that the commitment that you will have for the rest of your life. Uh, one thing about the rings is that it's it's in a circle, and I think that's important because it's a reminder that your marriage is is uh, never ending. It's uh, it's a circle, so it will be forever until we see Jesus, but it will be forever. And so that's a great commitment that we have uh, for one another. And, and also, the thing about rings is that that they they weren't always this pretty. Uh, they didn't start off like this. They didn't just dig this out of the ground and think, "Wow, this is beautiful. Let's put it on a finger." This, you know, this came out as very raw material. And then somebody took this ring, this raw material, and they crafted it, and they made it into a beautiful uh, ring. And uh, you can just see the detail and the craftsmanship in this. It's, it's beautiful. Well, that's what God does to your marriage. He brings the raw materials from each of your lives, and he brings that together, and he begins to craft it and to shape it and to make it into what he wants into the the perfect coupling together. So that's kind of what God does in your life. And so these rings are more than just something we wear. This truly is a symbol of your life together. And that's why we wear these for all people to see, remembering what God has done and what he's going to continue to do. So Dave, what I want you to do is I want you to take this ring, and as you place it on Hannah's finger, I want you to repeat these words after me. In token and pledge of our constant faith and abiding love, with this ring, I thee wed, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hannah, if you take this ring, and you place it on David's finger, repeat these words after me. In token and pledge of our constant faith and abiding love, with this ring, I thee wed, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Let's pray together. Father, we, we know that your hand is upon this relationship. Father, we know and understand that you are at work in their lives. And, and we've come to this point today really recognizing the fact that these two love you and they love each other. And now, God, they have spoken of their vows to one another. They've made a commitment to each other and to you, this covenant that they are entering into. And our prayer, Father, is that you would strengthen them and give them power for the days to come. That you would surround them with people that love them, friends and family uh, that love them to, to encourage them and help them along the way. But ultimately, God, I pray that, that you would become their source of, of wisdom and source of strength every day. Father, I pray for, uh, for blessings upon their marriage, that as they move forward on this journey together, God, that you would direct their steps and that they would be right where you want them to be and that you'd be honored in their marriage relationship. God, we thank you again for today. We thank you for how you have worked, and we uh, just pray over them as we conclude this ceremony today. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, having pledged your love and loyalty to each other, and having sealed your pledge with the marriage rings, I do, by the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel, pronounce you husband and wife. David and Hannah, 
you are no longer two independent persons, but you are now one in the eyes of the Lord. What God has joined together, let no man separate. David, you may kiss your bride. gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. David Derulo.